Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Whims of Fate, where we are here with the tragic end of our second generation of the Whims legacy with Carissa. Now, nothing but bones in front of the killer Barina, who actually killed her right in front of her son and daughter, Ducky and Sunny. I can't believe how absolutely tragic this is. This has been a completely unexpected twist. I thought Carissa would be able to defend herself a little bit longer against this killer Barina, but alas, she was not. However, she did sacrifice herself to save the young members of the tribe and has inspired the next heir to the Whims legacy to rise. So guys, now that we have lost our leader, we need to follow along the Whims challenge rules, which you guys can see in the video description down below. And we need to pick the next leader. When we pick the next leader, we will also randomize three personality traits for them. And we will randomize the tribe size. So we might be able to keep all of the members of the tribe if we have the number roll anywhere from 2 to 20. And if it's above 11, we can keep everybody. If it's below 11, like say only two members, then we have to release pretty much everyone in the tribe. I am a little nervous about that to say the least. <laughs> But thankfully, um, we're going to see if we are pretty lucky. I'm staring at this with two killer Barina, one deadly Barina, and one friendly Barina here, thinking about the words pretty lucky right now, just so you guys know. They don't really feel very applicable to our situation. Uh, but I think we are going to be pretty lucky with our brand new leader, the Generation 3 leader of the Whims Tribe, Mono. So I really had to think carefully about this because I have to pick the leader before I roll to see how many members we get to keep in the tribe. And honestly, it would be safer for us to keep Almond because she has quite a wide variety of ways that she can pull food from. And she also has a really, really cool, oh wait, no, no, it's Mono. That's one of the reasons I picked Mono. But she has some interesting mutations. She also has some really great ways of feeding herself. So she'd be able to keep food coming into the tribe and we wouldn't starve to death. But Mono, I picked for a couple reasons. I picked Mono because here she is in the thick of it, constantly staying behind to make sure that the youngest members of the tribe will not be left and that they will not fall prey to this killer Barina. And also because she's been like that ever since she was tiny, ever since she was a teenager, she was always watching over the babies and protecting them and trying to make sure that they weren't eaten every two seconds by birds who are conspicuously absent right now and by Barina. Uh, and because she has a really interesting mutation of wings. So if we can manage to get some children from her and risk having them have children or someone else with the wing mutation having children, then we might have flying nichelings, which might actually save us because if we could fly, we could just perch up in a tree whenever these guys come by and it wouldn't be a big deal. They would just wander on by and growl at us and we would laugh and throw acorns on their head. That would be amazing. So I would love to get us up off the ground at some point. Uh, also for a second, I thought that Barina was in the tree and I was going to be like, that's cheating. Get out of that tree. Uh, but thankfully he is not up in the tree. But that's why I picked Mono. <sighs> and then we rolled to see how big the tribe size would be. And thankfully, you guys, we have once again upped the tribe size to 14. So we are going up from 12 maximum members to 14 members, which means we can add three more members into the tribe, uh, either through babies or through wanderers who stop by. And Mono also rolled Caring, which fits her completely perfectly for a personality trait, Restless, and Overbearing for her three personality traits. And I really love that because she has always protected the younger and weaker members of the tribe. But after the recent tragedies of all of these killer Barina, she probably has decided with her restless trait that staying in one place is just too dangerous. So she's gonna become quite overbearing in herding all of the other nicheling members together like a little sheep flock and trying to keep them like where she thinks they're gonna be safest. So that will be how she is very overbearing is trying to keep everyone safe uh, and telling them like what to do basically. So she's gonna make a great leader that way. We just have to see if she's going to live long enough to lead. So, <sighs> Let's go ahead and carry on. 
We've just got, you know, two killer berina, one normal berina, and a complete lack of food, but I'm sure this is going to be fine. And Mono's very first command is to run! We're making for these trees! We are making for these trees. We'll see if we can make a stand there or not. And if push comes to shove and we have like one nicheling left, we're kicking them onto this plort. Or plort. Why do I always call it a plort? This is not Slime Rancher. We're kicking them onto this port and we're going to run for it. Um, but for now, we'll try to stay here because it's been such an amazing land. But we're going to try to move to where there's at least a few more trees so we can gather up a lot more food. Uh, speaking of food, let's go ahead and have Lynx the second prove that he can be brave enough to protect his younger brother, Fox. Come on. Oh my gosh, that wasn't enough. <laughs> oh no, all right. And then Fox, who has been attacked by the Barina. Yay, he fought for his life, and I think we might almost have enough food now. Oh, thank goodness. We have enough food to at least live through the day. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to have Almond go ahead and harvest some food, and then also clear the way behind her so that we can try to get everybody to safety. Everybody, including Sunny, a baby, who we're going to toss forward. And then Mono is going to yell and command little Ducky to also run for it. Go, Ducky, go! Get out of here! All right, so we're gonna get him out of here too. And then because she is heavily pregnant herself, I think Talur would insist that she goes next. Go, Mono, you cannot stay here. You are pregnant with like Talur's child actually, and you need to reach safety. She's gonna be pregnant for at least two more days. And I think that she would yell and be quite insistent that some of these other nichelings try to follow her. But at this point, I don't know if they can reach her. And I do think that in her pregnant state with Talur behind her, She's going to go ahead and at least try to get forward to escort everybody over here. Meanwhile, with Talur, he's going to jump over, at least try to deliver a poison bite with his fangs, and then jump back. All right, we'll have to see how that works out for us. And then over here, Moon is actually extremely stubborn and refusing to leave her tree. And she also is quite insistent that there's a better way to handle this, all right? All you have to do is just outrun this fool for 22 more days, which is longer than she's gonna be alive. But look, she's like an angry squirrel. She knows how to handle the situation. There's food here and she's not leaving it. So that's kind of, uh, you know, Moon's status on all of this. And Melelnel is in need of food. And she also is in need of getting the heck away from any of the dangerous killer Boina. So I think I'm actually going to release Melelnel. We'll have her run over to Riri and we'll have Riri go ahead and heal her up. And then we're gonna let Melelnel like run for it. Riri will go ahead and release her. There we go. And speaking of run for it, Laila is going to run for it as well after she grabs, uh oh. I thought she had more room to run. There's a friendly Barina. Maybe she's going to run off because she's weakened and hurt with the friendly Barina. Oh boy! Layla, I think that you're in a big hot spot of trouble here. Just saying. The friendly Barina only has seven days left to live and is trying. I think he delivered a blow. Somebody delivered a bit of a blow. I actually think that that was um, Carissa now that I think about it. All right. Hurry up, kid. You gotta run for it. Layla would be quite insistent that the, the key to surviving here is to run for it. Uh, also, don't don't steal her acorns. Those are hers. Alright, Moon's still doing good there. I think I'm gonna go ahead. Riri, do I want any more children from you? He does have the opportunity to leave behind Scorpion Tail. You know what? I think Riri will come over and maybe he'll try to flirt with Moon. <gasps> he successfully flirted with Moon! Just because we might see what might happen with a child with them. Because Moon's got, like, pizzazz as well. And who knows what kind of useful genes these guys are hiding in their hidden genes that are blind due to the whims challenge. Alright, then let's come down here. And away from all of that terror, we are trying to find our way to a place where we'll have abundant food. First things first, Mono is going to gather up all of the food she found there. Meanwhile, Sunny, you have the toxic fangs, but you can't gather anything. That is a big tragedy. You can dig, and you have a little bit of strength. Can anybody gather these berries? Nobody can gather these berries. But let's go ahead. Ooh, and actually, I think Almond. 
Uh, Almond, I'm trying to wait until Fox is old enough to have a child, but I kind of really love the vibe that Tulur has been putting down with some of his amazing genes too. Hmm. Because he is protecting everyone now. And Lynx is also protecting everyone. Hmm. Tempting. Tempting. You know, we have a few of Tulur's children, so we might think about having a child with Lynx. But for now, I'm going to actually send Almond over to the tree. She's going to listen. Oh, and there's a nest right over here. She's going to go ahead and listen to Mono and try to get everyone to the tree. Come along, children. Everyone needs to hurry. Oh, good. There's a nice big... Yay, we can see what's happening over here. Thank goodness. Also, we can see some of the bundles that Lynx can hunt up for us. Oh, good. And Fox can actually gather those berries. So once again, we have literally staved off at the last moment uh, starving to death, <laughs> which is a very good thing. All right. And we'll clear away some of the grass around here so that we can make sure this is a safe spot to go. All right. How are we doing? Killer Barina is still coming! All right, Leela. You know what? I think that you deserve to be able to run for it, kid. You're pretty smart. You've been involved in trying to run for it from the beginning. I'm going to have you go ahead and gather up some berries for us first. Like, seriously, kid, you, you want to run for it. You don't want to stay here, I'm telling you. And then, speaking of berries... Yeah, I think we're just going to play Ring Around the Rosie with some Killer Barina. Probably a bad idea, but I think Riri is a little invested. We'll try to get Moon down here to eat this so that she'll live long enough to have that baby. All right. And speaking of trees and food, go, Almond, go! Thank goodness we are able to get some of the food over here. That is such a huge relief. Mono is ready to go ahead and give birth. <gasps> Whoa, there's a lot of the toxic berry bushes over here, which actually makes a great... Look at this little, like, hidden fortress. This is a great place to have a nest. We could even put our nest over on this side so that you could still access, uh, and Mono can't access it, but so that whoever's in the nest could, oh, see everything. Oh, I should have had her put a nest up here. In fact, she is very overbearing. Can she reach that in time? I think she can. Hmm, but I think she's really comfy right here for now for the birth of her first child. There we go. And Lynx, can you hunt anything or... Ooh, there's actually a bunch of berry bushes over here. So what do we have? Those are toxic berries once again. Hmm, gonna have to watch out for those. And there's a bunch of bunnels jumping around. That if they just come a little closer, I think that some of the kids will be able to hunt. And then we'll have Fox join everybody as well. There we go. All right, Mono is summoning the family to her side, so hopefully they will stay out of trouble. Let me pull up the name list from you guys, just to make sure that we've got some good names for whoever Mono is about to have. And meanwhile, are you guys going to be okay? Ooh, looking interesting over here, but the friendly Baron is coming back to try to save us. And Moon is just going to be chittering like an angry squirrel at that killer Barina. And oh, look at our little baby, a little baby girl with toxic body. Oh, it's like Lala is being reborn. She's got double digger's paw, toxic body, the ability to go ahead and eat some bugs. She's looking good. All right, this is going to be little Ivy. So welcome to the family, Ivy. I hope you have some interesting genes hiding in there. We're really like, that, that's quite fun that she actually ended up with the anteater nose yet again. So I think that that's, uh, I don't know if it's going to serve us very well here, but I'm glad to see it's there, basically. All right, so what else do we have? Fox hasn't grown up yet. We also need to wait for Ducky to grow up before Almond might have a chance to have those mega horns. That'll be very important. I, I basically need Almond to potentially mate with Fox or Ducky because we need to try to get those mega horns that they might potentially be carrying as recessive genes. Uh, that's kind of on the list. All right, so let's see. We need more food for now, which means Almond's going to come down here, kick the tree. Do we have anybody else who can help us eat any of the nuts? Any of the kids? Any of nope. Okay, we're a bunch of diggers. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be... Oh, look at that. Well, we can be a bunch of diggers and a bunch of hunters, actually. 
See, we can do a little digging over here. We can do a little hunting if we just had a few more members of the tribe with us. So let's actually call um, Lynx over if he can push his way through all of the underbrush. Oh, go, go, go. Yes! All right, there's one successful hunt. And we can also dig right here. See, and Sunny is just being teased by the bunnels who know that she's not a threat anymore. All right, we're going to harvest up the grass so that we can see what's going on and make things a little bit safer for everybody. We'll keep, we're will we going to protect our little baby. She's got angry squirrel tail too. Delora, congratulations. You're ending up with a lot of interesting kids. All right, and I think that Mono, I might have her mate with Fox when he comes of age um, because, again, we want to try to play with those genes. We don't know if he has them or not. But we're relying on memory and the randomness of the genetics to hopefully gift us something good. And then over here, we are continuing to play Ring Around the Rosie with the... Oh, and we need to go ahead and sit on a nest soon, too. But we're playing Ring Around the Rosie with the very deadly Barina. <laughs> and I think Moon might go ahead and have her child maybe over one of these nests and potentially have... Riri escort it to where everybody else is because Moon's not going to leave her tree. That would be kind of interesting. All right. Up next. Who's hurt? Why? Riri! All right. Moon is insistent that she is not going to leave. Like, absolutely not going to leave. Oh, they're both short sighted, too. <laughs> you two little ones. What are we even going to do? Here. Here. She'll go lick that to try to help him out. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and have Moon maybe... Okay, now she's kind of hidden for a second. I'm gonna have her try to wiggle over to a good nest spot. Here, and Riri will come with her and we'll jump into the grasses. So hopefully we'll be able to have the baby and hide them pretty easily. <laughs> a little worried about that. Meanwhile, over here, this is my food before you come and snatch it, bird. I see you. And we're going to grab more of the nuts. Thank you very much. Almond is able to keep us fed that way. And then we're going to have little fox. Can you do anything, little fox? He can harvest berries, but he can only harvest berries. I mean, push come to shove, he could harvest some of the toxic berries and we could cure him. But I kind of don't want to poison the poor thing. Maybe he likes eating those berries just as a quirk. Uh, we'll, we'll clear away some of the grass for now because that's an important thing to do. Come on, little Ivy, uh, in order to keep everybody safe. Where are all the bunnels? A lot of the bunnels are over here, so there must be a normal berry bush over there. <gasps> and there's actually a termite mound over here. Oh, little Ivy, you were born next to a pile of bugs, just perfect for you. Don't worry, your dad's gonna go ahead and like make a nice path so that you can, in the future, eat some termites. Yay, that's a really good thing. And then we're going to have Lynx reveal more of the spots over here. Because we really have to see where we're going in order to do some effective hunting. But down here, we actually have some nice dig spots. Wonderful! At least these extreme hills do have a lot of roots to provide to us for food. Alright, still clinging to survival. Moon, are you going to be able to make it? Okay, somebody is being attacked. <gasps> it's a mama berina again! It is a mother berina once more with a baby. I mean, on the one hand, that's a lot of food if you're able to defeat it. On the other hand, that's also a lot of trouble and we're about to have a baby. Um. Okay. Even though Moon is very sassy and she's like, look, I'm not leaving my tree. I think that on the, assistant, the insistence of Riri, we're going to temporarily leave the tree. <laughs> And he's going to try to guide her over to the other trees. We do need more people to be able to gather up the nuts after all. So this is a good thing. Uh, so I think Moon was dragged away basically by her bristling angry squirrel tail by Riri. For her own protection and for the protection of the upcoming baby. Uh, so we're going to have to see how that is going to end up, my friends. But alright guys, 
So I think we'll go ahead and leave it there. We did have the loss of the second heir and the rise of the third generation. Uh, I really like Mono as a leader. I'm really hopeful for what kind of children she might have. Like, look at little Ivy. I'm very enamored with Talur. He actually has redeemed himself quite a bit to me. I can't wait to see what, what Fox's kids might look like. Uh, and I actually think that Ducky and Sunny might be getting a little bit close. Hmm, we'll have to think about this. But all right, if you guys could, do please leave a like for the rise of the very caring, overbearing, and, oh, what was her last trait? Caring, overbearing, and restless Mono, who wants to make sure that everybody is safe and will run from all of the Barina. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing here and over on our Twitch channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.